the flow state involves the uh, precisely what you just what you just explained there there is the some object let's say what what whatever it may may be uh there is you the the subject uh the flow state is eminently relevant or i can say the object is eminently relevant to you to you at that at yeah it's that super point. salient super salient um but the the state of being that you enter into if the relationship between you and the object is uh, is correct or is let, let's say properly uh, properly proportioned and conformed um, there is an emergent property or let's say yeah. a, a, a state um, which people perceive as we could call a higher level of of, of being. May I talk about the flow state? Because yes, please. <laughs> uh, so uh, and this, but, but my point is that what you just said yes. can be shown at least on one particular level yes. to be scientifically demonstrable. Yes, and so Chiksat Mahai, who who actually unfortunately recently passed away, mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, did work on what are the uh, on the flow state. So the flow state, uh, you people will get into the flow state doing playing jazz. Um, doing martial arts, sparring, athletics, uh, reciting poetry, uh, and the state is, is this. Um, uh, you feel tremendously connected to the environment. Uh, there is a sense of super salience and ongoing discovery. Uh, there is a, it, there's a paradoxical state in, in that sense. You know at one level you may be exerting tremendous effort, but it feels effortless to you. It, it, it has an element, and I, I don't mean this in the theological sense, but I'm not excluding it either. It has an element of grace in it. So when I'm sparring, for example, my hand just goes up for the block. I'm not, like, I'm not making it happen. I'm participating, and I'm not absent. But what's happening is there's a tremendous sense, and I'm going to break the word up, not because I'm trying to be sacrilegious, because I'm trying to make a point. There's a tremendous sense of at one with the environment, right? That you that you're just it, you're totally flowing together. You're totally in sync, and 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 that it's like a conversation that's taken on a life of its own, and and of course athletes seek to seek to get this out, and and I've I, I've with uh, with Leo Ferraro and H uh, Hannah Era uh, Bennett uh, in the handbook, uh, the Oxford Handbook of Spontaneous Thought. I've proposed an account of what's going on cognitively. We don't need to get into that, what are the cognitive processes, so that we can put it on a, a real scientific basis. But it ha exactly, it's a, it, so people reliably report a, a, a significant diminishment of self-consciousness, not consciousness, mm -hmm. but that sense of, I'm separated in here, but, but behind that sort of nagging nanny voice, how do people, uh, how do I look, is my hair okay, right? Or what are they thinking, mm -hmm. all that stuff. All, that, all of that drops away. And so the sense of being, of being trapped inside in the world out there to totally dissolves away and people feel this dynamic living at one minute. And here's the thing. Bye bye Kant. Yes, yeah. bye bye Kant. Right. Uh, so a couple things about this. This is predictive. Oh, first of all, this is a genuine universal. This is what Csikszentmihalyi Mah was able to show. These are rare in psychology, which is across cultures, across gender, socioeconomic statics, linguistic family, people describe this experience in detail in almost perfectly synonymous terms. It is a genuine universal, which, which you should do as a scientist, you should say that reflects something probably essential about the functionality of the human mind, that the human mind is capable of this and seeks it out. Second, thirdly, um, pay attention to how many fingers I'm holding up. Um, this is predictive. If I, I can predict, this is, I mean, it's, 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 it's a high correlation. I wouldn't claim it. It's not like, it's not like one, it's, but it's, it's way above, it's probably 0 0.7, 0 0.8. But I can predict people's evaluation of their well-being by asking them how reliably they get into a flow state. With one important exception, video games. So uh, uh, video games, not all video games, and not for all people, 
But video games are designed to get you into the flow state because they actually give, the, they, they, they instantiate the conditions of the flow. In the flow state, you want, a, you want to present people with a challenge that requires them to stretch their skills to meet the challenge. There has to be clear feedback. Right? And, their, and, their, and their efforts have to matter. They can die in this situation. These are all possible in a video game. And then you keep ratcheting it up as they get better. Video games, but jazz does it too. Mo rock climbing. They're, they're the only explanation as to why people rock climb, because it sounds like something from Greek mythology in Hades. You, <laughs> climb up this rock face. You're going to hurt yourself. You're going to get, get sore and fatigued, and you might fall down, and it's horrible. And once you get to the top, come back down. When you talk to rock climbers, the reason they do it is because it gets them into the flow state. Now, the thing about the video, why the video games is dangerous is they, they get into a flow state that, and it's designed, sometimes deliberately so, to not transfer outside to real world conditions. And so the world seems unavailable for flow, and the video game, game seems always available for flow, and then you get video game addiction. So you have to put that aside, but generally, with, with that important exception, flow is predictive of well-being, which is predictive of meaning in life, that sense of connectedness. So the way to, meaning in life is not the meaning of life. I don't presume to, to talk about that. But meaning in life is the degree to which you feel your life is worth living, even with all of the failures and faults and frustrations of human existence. And it, it ultimately depends on your sense of connectedness, which is very powerful. I can ask you what's meaningful in life, what, what contributes to meaning in life by asking you these two questions. What do you want to exist even if you don't? And how much of a difference do you make to it? How connected are you to it? Those are the things that makes your life meaningful. And when people are in a flow state, they have that enhanced sense of meaning in life and well-being. So I want to. I think I want. I want to make two points on this. Um, if you're if you're okay with this, of course. Yeah. Um, well, well, one part is the, which you mentioned a little bit with the vi video games, is the the ethical side of it. Um, yes. Because it, there's a sense in which flow is 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 morally neutral. Yes. Um, because in you could get into the flow state doing something bad. Of course, yeah. Um, which means that if, if we're trying to con uh, to come up with a, a way for us to understand the flow state in a, in a positive way and relate it correctly to ourselves and to reality, mm -hmm. we have to. There has to be some sort of moral framework mm -hmm. that flow is understood within. Yes. Um, in order to prevent. Um, us seeking out the flow state in order to commit evil acts. Yes. And you should know that the, I'm in America, the US military is making use of uh, uh, transmagnetic, uh, transcranial magnetic stimulation and uh, TDCS, transcranial direct current stimulation, to try and induce the flow state in people that they, they are training to be sharpshooters because they want them to more readily be able to get into the flow state in order to enhance their performance as sharp sharpshooters. Mm -hmm. So the fact that this can be taken up in a way that could be very readily used uh, for evil. Oh, well, oh, yeah. I mean, I mean yeah. think about this. Think about, you know, Hitler planning the conquest of, of Europe. Uh, I mean, I bet he was in the flow state when he was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, when he was looking over the map and, you know, moving yeah. the, little, the oh. little figures around. Sure. You know, he was totally into it. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we wouldn't say that that uh, is a flow state that we would want to get into. We're not plan going to plan the conquest of Europe, I hope. Um, I, I don't think I've been trying to. No, I w <laughs> but I, or, or the genocide, you know, of an entire race. Do you want to make your second point or can I respond to that point? Uh, respond and then I'll make my second point. So I, I recommend strongly uh, the book by Wolf, Meaning in Life and Why It Matters, because she makes an argument uh, that you, you can't, you you can't reduce morality to meaning in life, which is an argument you've just made, mm -hmm. but the reverse is also the case. You can't reverse meaning in life to uh, moral. You can, live a, you can live a life that's very moral and uh, is nevertheless, you can think of somebody living a life that in, uh, in which they're very moral, but they're very alienated, disconnected, yeah. uh, yes. uh, right? Yeah. And, and their lives are, are, are uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and I've met people like that. Yes. 
and, and there's a, and there's a there's a sort of troubling way in which certain uh, certain dimensions of identity politics or wokeness are actually yeah. pushing people in that direction. So I just wanted to I just wanted to say that uh, it's it's very much about the proper relation and proportioning between meaning in life and uh, morality and and and, and and also that that is related to mastery, where mastery doesn't mean dominance. Mastery means the degree to which you can transfer this moment of flow broadly and deeply in your life. There's a, there's a side note that <laughs> I'm not sure if we should get into, yeah. uh, which is that I, I, I think, and I know you, I know you, you talk about uh, meaning in life yeah. uh, uh, and relevance realization, yeah. you know, broadly on the horizontal yes. plane, um, you you are um, not not talking. How can you say? It seems to me that you're you're avoiding uh, an explicit connection with the vertical, insofar as that would uh, connect to some sort of absolute teleology. Uh, correct. Yes. I don't. I mean, I don't want to put you in a corner with this. Uh, no, no. I, I'm, I'm, I, I want. I want. I because want, I want, we, I want, I want, we as we was Christians would immediately make that connection. I do think. I, I like because it seems to us that. I mean, it seems to me that when we talk about about meaning, that it, that it has that there is a hierarchy of meaning. Yes. That some things are more meaningful than others. You know, like if yeah. I, if I'm raking leaves in, on my on my lawn, that can be meaningful to me. But you know, because. I'm getting some exercise, yeah. I'm, out, I'm out in the yeah. fresh air, you know, I'm doing something that I need to do, there's a sense of accomplishment, um, you know, but the level of meaning is pretty, 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 pretty low, low yeah. because yeah. it doesn't really satisfy the two questions. Yeah, mm. but, 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 but then, you know, <coughs> if, I, if you're drowning in a river and I jump into the river and I risk my life to save, to save yours and yes. I drag you out, you know, that's tremendously meaningful. Yeah, one way to m measure meaning, in addition to the two questions, although it follows from them, what would you want to exist even if you don't, and how connected are you to it, is how many consequential decisions are you making? Des decisions of consequence. So saving a person's life, that's a, that's a very consequential action. Right. right. Raking the leaves, not so consequential. Right. The problem is you can't make that a standalone thing because it's parasitic on how meaningful, uh, like how meaningfully connected you are to things, right? So if you were not meaningfully connected to people, jumping into a river wouldn't be. A well, 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 that's the thing is that uh, yeah. I can say I, I don't know if this is a to is if this is a complete argument, but it seems to me at least that that uh, with this example, um, the saving your life is at, at least in part it's more meaningful because. In my connection with a person creates the possibility or affordances for a much greater number of connections and than and than breaking yes. leaves does. Yes. So it's a, it's a, it's I can say the the whole world of possibilities is, is larger, perhaps as we move up levels of meaning. I agree, and I've been recently talking about the vertical dimension and that, especially with gr the uh, Greg Enriquez and the series that we're filming on yeah. transcendent naturalism. So yes, I think there's also a qualitative thing. Um, a person, uh, because of the previous argument, mm -hmm. persons, it's not only quantitatively more, it's qualitatively more. They, di they display causal powers and properties that can't be found in rocks and stones and leaves. Right. And so it's also a qualitative. Right? It's a deeper reality. Of course, now, uh, just, I don't want to go into this right now, but where, where I, as a Christian, would go with that argument that I just said, or that, that line of logic, of course, is that, is that insofar as, we, um, as we, we, we deepen the meaning in our life um, through pursuing those, those um, actions or causes, ideas, activities that uh, afford a greater number of connections and possibility, which are in some sense perhaps more universally applicable um, that we afford ourselves greater the possibility not actual but the possibility of greater meaning in life yes and that therefore we as as Christians would want to go all the way up to the top yes and I I, I do too uh, but but so 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 that is for, for where for us there would be a kind of teleology 
Um, and that is where for... But it's a vertical teleology. It's a vertical yeah. teleology. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Not that we're denying any of, yeah. of that, but, but for, we're for, for, for us... But it's not as problematic as the horizontal, uh, as a, uh, just speaking philosophically. So I, I think... Y y y I, I'm not denying making... It, I'm, not, I'm not dismissing arguments on the horizontal. Right, right, right. But what I'm saying is uh, I think it, 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 is, it is easier to make stronger arguments for the vertical. Well, <laughs> I, mean, I certainly don't disagree with that. Yeah. They, but w what I would say is that we, we as Christians, in the way that people have traditionally spoken, as we say, we talk about the meaning of life. Yes. Um, and and w what I'm proposing is that, is that we can understand the meaning of life uh, in a teleological sense, as it's always been, yeah. always been understood, but understood not as a final, I can say, a singular final static point that you are trying to reach that is, you know, perfection, mm -hmm. yeah. um, but rather the, that place where uh, there is the, the affordance or the possibility of the greatest field of action and relevance realization. Yeah, a kind of epictasis, right? Well, that, uh, right, and so this is, if we get into the yeah. theological realm, right. I, think, I think this um, is very much a patristic idea because St. Gregory of Nyssa yes, exactly. um, has the idea of epectasis, the... Sorry for my mispronunciation. Uh, That's okay. in, Greek, yeah, <laughs> in Greek, it's epectasis, uh, which means expansion, extension, yeah. um, and so this is, there's this idea that, which St. Maximus picks up with his idea of aikinitostasis, the ever-moving rest. Um, and so th it's this idea that that heaven is not some static point. It's not. It's not. There's you know there's there is there is perfection and there's nothing there's nothing more that can be done with it because it's it's the end point of the road. Um, we explicitly reject that idea. And I reject that idea in Platonism. Too. Yes. Right. Yes. Well, uh, mm -hmm. we reject that idea, and we <laughs> we suspect that scholasticism and Thomism falls into that idea. Um, because it has to do very much with this uh, distinction between essence and energy and the Thomistic idea of the beatific vision and so on and so forth. Right. Um, so we're, so we, are, we are understanding, uh, let's call it heaven, uh, we're understanding heaven not as a static state, but as an, as St. Maximus says, as an ever-moving rest. In other words, it contains, if we say ever-moving rest, it contains both the vertical and the horizontal. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, because there is, uh, there is the potentiality for, well, s for actually infinite um, uh, expansion, extension. Development? Um, we, 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 I would say, I'm, I'm a little hesitant to use development or, or growth, although mm -hmm. I don't know if they're wrong, yeah. um, but certainly expansion and... and I'm just ex trying to get it out of being just a purely quantitative right, thing. Right, right. Well, uh, and, and we would understand that, you know, we, you can certainly put relevant rel realization so. in, in, yeah. in there because I think it combines very easily and we have a metaphysical mechanism by which we can understand this, which is the energies of God, mm -hmm. um, which, are, which are infinite um, in their variety um, although uh, not contradictory, but the es but the essence of God is nothing that can ever be foreclosed upon. It cannot exactly. be foreclosed it's upon. It's inexhaustible. It's in, in inexhaustible. It's, it's so, so, so right. there is, exactly. there is. We can say we can we can talk about it in teleological terms um, because of the element of rest, which is a horizontal. Yeah, yes, uh, yes. Uh, element. Yeah. I like what you're doing with um, this, by the way. But the moving would be the vertical. But, vertical. but there is right. a moving, yeah. and so and so when when we say that we when we as Orthodox Christians, at least, understanding this from a patristic point point of view, if we talk about the, the meaning of life, we don't mean it in this static state. Rather, we mean it in this infinite field of possibilities, yeah. um, uh, which is uh, if we connect it back to the to to your uh, initial idea, it's um, the more we delve into the, uh, the levels of reality, the greater affordances yep. we have. Yes. Um, and if we mm -hmm. reach, let's say, that, that, uh, that ultimate point, what we have is not simply uh, stasis, mm -hmm. stasis, as St. Right. Maximum says, right. 
what we have is the most in the most complete or, or the most ample or we would actually the father say infinite field of possibilities um, so so that that is how we as Orthodox Christians would, would understand the idea of, of meaning in life well can I say something that's not identical but I think is is on a convergent trajectory to that so I have been arguing for uh, the, a notion of orientation which is sort of primordial relevance realization mm -hmm. uh, and that uh, and you, it, it goes well with metanoia as mm -hmm. right right uh, um, but that there is within all of our orientations there is an attractor to an orientation towards the inexhaustible fount of intelligibility which is presupposed by every act well, there's, no, there's no end to intelligibility. Th that's right, and so there. But 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 but, but there's a but there's. So I was very much about the motion part. Yeah. Right. There, right. But but right, but, right, but, right, right. but but there's a rest part if you'll allow me. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and uh, I'm not claiming you're saying this, but I think I think you'll r at least. Oh, uh, we got something we can talk about. <laughs> uh, because this is deeply influenced by what I've read in, in your tradition, and but also in Eastern tradition. So I, I want to be honest about yeah. the, the provenance. So you've got the movement in the combinatorial explosiveness of intelligence. There is no, right, the relevance realization ha has to come to a realization of the inexhaustible source of intelligibility, right? right? And that it, that it can never close on. Mm -hmm. exactly. exactly. Because I can't, I can't, but then th there's a possibility of something else that, and I, and I, I Language makes us talk in sequence, and it's frustrating at times, yes. right? Okay, so non-temporally then, right. relevance, one of the things that relevance realization is always doing is checking its own relevance, because that's why we have moments of insight. Right. We thought this was relevant, and it doesn't turn out to be relevant. Right. Relevance realization can come to the realization that it itself is irrelevant, because it is now not oriented towards any being but to the ground of being itself. Well, we of course would want to want to go in that direction, and in fact, we we believe that. Um, so you got the. Do you see though? You got both the movement part of it, yes, right. and the, and yeah. the, and this absolute rest point. But that's how you say. That's what we try to emphasize. Uh, that's what the fathers of the church uh, emphasize, and that's how they how they explain this. Which, by the way, is why God is not boring. Yes. Um, or heaven is not boring, as some people, <laughs> you know, yeah, have, yeah, have, I mean, have commented, because it's the opposite. There's an element of paradox in all this. Yeah, Nicholas of the, the, the tension. Yes, 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 totally. Merchmont Gisosmus, the blessed memory, always emphasized the paradoxical nature of can, orthodoxy. Can, can I address that? both these things yes, together. Yes, yes, but see, forgive <laughs> <laughs> me, I have, to, I, have to, I, have to, I have to interject something here. Because, it's a creative one. Because, because yeah. this, <laughs> this is precisely how we understand the person of Jesus Christ, because right. he is the the actual incarnation and we could say instantiation of the perfect union of the vertical and the horizontal. Yes. Hence the cross. Yeah. Hence the cross. And notice very how important vertical and, very important. and horizontal Together, reality right. is yeah. cruciform. Yeah. Yes. That's cruciform yes. exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Yeah. So go, 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 go say what you're going to say. Well, because uh, like the the inexhaustible is you, you you can't think of it as homogeneous because um, what we've so uh, there uh, are but, there but but the, but, the, but Thomas would think of it as homogeneous. Well, okay then I'll, I I I'll be critical of Thomas here, although I I love him in other ways. Uh, but there, Godel. There are an inevitable trade-off relationships in intelligibility. Oh. You can't get simultaneous consistency and completeness. Oh. Bias variance trade. The 20th century within philosophy, mathematics, and cognitive science have been the discovery of these trade-off relationships. What relevance realization does is it finds those trade-off relationships and puts them into what's called opponent processing. It has, so your so, so, for example, the way your attention is working, you have two networks in your brain. One network is task-focused, and the other, your mind is wandering. 
And because this opens up the variations, new possibilities, and then this actualizes and selects. And so you that's opponent processing. And that not, not adversarial. No, no it's not adversarial. adversarial. No, it's opponent processing. Right. Think of your, your 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 level of arousal, and I don't mean sexual arousal, I mean metabolic arousal. Right. So the way the way your your body handles that is with opponent processing. You have one system, the sympathetic, that is biased to interpreting as much of reality as it can as a threat or opportunity and oh. raising your metabolic level. There's another system, the parasympathetic, and th these are both parts of the autonomous, self-lying nervous system, right? Your parasympathetic system is biased to seeing as much of reality as it can as a safe opportunity for rest and recuperation. And they are not like this, they are like this. They are constantly pulling and pushing on each other and they are constantly developing your right, your fit, the fittedness of your arousal to the environment in in, in a positive way. Yes, yes. in a positive, exactly. and we see and we see this repeated uh, every everywhere throughout yeah. throughout the whole structure of, of reality yeah. and yeah. our experience of, of reality and our interactions w w with with each other. Um, and I think, <laughs> but uh, to to reemphasize the Christological here, which as a Christian, there's no way I'm mm -hmm. going to yeah. uh, get away from. Um, uh, this is what the Council of Chalcedon said that the that the that the two natures and by the two natures you know we're think we're understanding the union of of the divine and the human the the the, the noetic and the sensible right um, you know the I can say the soul the soul and the body the yeah. uh, heaven and earth ev all, all of the, these two dimensions are being are are being unified. Um, in a way which which completely acknowledges the the fullness and validity of each part, mm -hmm. um, without demeaning each part, yeah. um, because they, they they must come together uh, perfectly and in some sense in an, in an equal manner, and so the so the two the two natures of Christ you know and, yeah. and under yeah. think of the two natures of Christ as these two levels of reality, yes. the vertical and the horizontal com coming together. Um, and the synergy. In, well, I'm going to get to this. Okay, synergy, I don't because the, okay. <laughs> we, yeah. you know, yeah. com coming coming yeah. together mm -hmm. um, uh, without division, without separation, without change, without confusion. Yeah. That's that's the yeah. those yeah. are the adverbs that are right. used at the exactly. at the council of no Calcium. reduction of one pole. No, 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 no reduction. Absolutely. That's what each, I hear when each, you say that. Each yeah. perfect yeah. in their each perfect yeah. in their own way, but but joining together, working together, so that so that the, so that. So that the so, uh, the adversarial element is is um, overcome or or, or or abolished, and and this Saint Maximus actually explicitly stated this that the, that um, <laughs> in his in his controversies with the Monothelites, so, um, you know, he was saying the the whole the whole point of, of Christ is that there cannot be opposition uh, yeah. you know there can or adv adversarial yeah, op right. op opposition mm -hmm. um, and that, that this is the um, this is the marvel of christ is ho is how this how this comes together mm -hmm. um, and so you know i i know that you don't believe that in in the explicit way that i'm that I, i'm expressing it but the, the reason that i'm expressing it is because um, I, I for for us the, it's this is the central point of christianity right yeah. And and so, uh, m what I'm getting at is that the what is the central point of Christianity, and what is the um, that which um, a great deal or mo most of all of our practices and beliefs in in yeah. the Orthodox Church um, are, are are focused on is precisely this kind of union. Um, it's a transjective yeah. union, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it involves the, 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 the vertical axis, the, ho the horizontal axis. All of these examples that you give on the, on the more physical level yeah. or on, on, the, on the intelligible th level, the, um, they are, for us as Christians, they are instantiated in, in a way uh, that we can, that we can um, relate to personally mm -hmm. uh, that uh, we can rate, relate to existentially existentially yeah. Yeah. existentially mm. historically even um, that is for us the the uh, how can you say the the the, per, the, the perfect instantiation instantiation 
and realization. Yes. Um, the By the way, it, it works in Japanese as well. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Uh, Nishitani, that's where uh, I actually got the... Really, really? The, 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 from, yeah, yeah, no, the, the perfect realization yeah. of uh, all, all, all of these ideas. So, so that, that, that's why for us as, as Christians, um, you know, <laughs> well, obviously Christians refers to, refers to Christ. And so, so all of the things that you're saying um, I mean, I find to be true, and 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 uh, I'm thrilled at the at the arguments that that you that you uh, developed. But uh, we, as Orthodox Christians, find them all uh, fulfilled in that which uh, forms the center of our faith. So, I see great truth and wisdom in the proposal of Christ as a symbol on, right? Not just a symbol the way we use it, but right. so, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, of an entire incarnational ontology. I, uh, yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah. Right. Of course, for, for us, it's, it's the, more, the, right? the extra, the extra part, the, the fulfillment is that the, the symbol on, the, the symbol and the reality also, also combine. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, and that's perhaps the extra step, um, which, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't say that we can prove that scientifically, but, but I think that um, if we... And I don't think the reverse can be. I don't think no, the, the I, the re I don't think the op Well, certainly I don't yes. think the opposite yeah. would, would, would be true, but, but I think that the, the if, we under, if we take the logic of, the, of transjectivity mm -hmm. uh, and the logic of conformity um, and we and we see how it extends throughout all of reality um, and you know you make excellent arguments about how both both um, both of these extend throughout all, all of reality um, that it does that it is not out of place for us Christians um, to continue that extension all the way to the union of the symbol with the reality. Mm -hmm. And that's what we as Christians believe. And, and you know, and, and that is, um, I, I, I don't have any argument against that uh, 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 at the level at which we're talking. Um, uh, and so I hope you can at least I, I, I can say this, and I mean it as a compliment, so please take it as a compliment. I'm asking for that. If I were to be a Christian, I would be an Orthodox Christian for a lot of the arguments that have been articulated here. Um, uh, and so, because I, 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 I see the deep resonances, I see, uh, I agree with a lot of the moves uh, that you're making. Um, so I do want to acknowledge that. Um, this is not, I'm, I, I don't consider myself a dilettante in these conversations. I consider myself coming into deep good faith and really being challenged by what's being said. And we feel that. Absolutely. Well, yes, you you feel that. Absolutely. Other, uh, I, 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 yeah. I feel that. And um, yeah. we, we both have um, immense respect for, for you and for your work and Very for the, so. for the yeah. positions that you've, that you've arrived at. Um, and. Uh, well, of course, we, we would feel um, happy that <laughs> <laughs> you know that, uh, that that is your attitude towards toward, toward Orthodox Christianity. What you're trying to do is, is to promote healing here and at oneness, at yes. atonement, uh, reconciliation, uh, give people a sense of meaning in life, and that's a tremendously important but, thing. But, but I deeply want it to be the case that my work allows. And we'll just we'll, we'll call it this revised Neoplatonism, mm -hmm. to enter again into a, a deeper reciprocal reconstruction. Yeah. Uh, uh. Well, I think I mean we, we we spoke about that before. Yeah. You know, um, that 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 field of possibilities that yeah. that, that yeah. I, 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 I I mentioned, which I which I really believe is a, is a, um, ought to be the the realm that mm -hmm. uh, how do you say that. 
that that the culture has as its backdrop. Yeah. I would like to see that as the cultural backdrop instead Absolutely. of what we have right now, the, the scientific materialism and it's we're in complete agreement about that. Yeah, Absolutely. and and it's occasional drifting towards you know a postmodern nihilis nihilistic a total, total dead end in other words. Yeah. 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 Cold so, sack. I mean, this is um, I no. yeah. Yeah. The, the 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 fact that we can you know even right here we're working on that that field. Yep. Yeah. Um, exactly. And uh, we're entering into tremendous agreement um, about tremendously important mm. important questions. Um, that how can that not be a good thing? Um, and the interdisciplinary nature of all this, as you point out, it's it's not just psychology, it's science and philosophy. It, it, it has to be and, and it, 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 anything you can make to mention. And, and there's there it's are there are other resonances yeah, of your work yeah. with with themes of orthodox theology. Mm -hmm. You mentioned synergy. I wanted to mention synergy yeah, again. Yeah. Of course, this 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 whole um, scheme of of relevance, realization, and trans transjectivity is. Uh, is synergistic in so nature. Yeah. Uh, uh, intended to be so. Intended to be so. And of course, that, that is a key idea in, in orthodoxy. That is how we understand our relationship to God mm -hmm. um, as synergistic. And you and I have discussed the deep interpenetration, interdefinition of participation and synergy. And mm -hmm. so, and so, and because I've been advocating, oh, c conformity theory is a participation. Mm -hmm theory of knowing, you, yeah, right? right? You, you, you right. both, you, you are participating, right, in the same idos, right, the same form. Communion. To yes, me. yes, very much. And, and so I, I think that th there's no participation without synergism, but the also synergism presupposes participation. And so any framework in which uh, that's not possible uh, is one that I just reject because it ultimately is going to l lead I think inevitably to the loss of participatory knowing, a loss of the conformity theory, a loss of real tra self transcendence. Yeah, and, and yeah. A, a loss of connection with reality. Yes, yes. absolutely. Uh, yeah. Which leads to alienation, which leads yeah, to yeah, yeah. all of Absurdity, the Absurdity, alienation, crisis. Crisis. Exactly. Yes, yes. And, um, you know, so uh, there's w one, one um, I wanted to go back to one idea and, and um, trace it a little bit in an orthodox direction, which is the idea of flow. Yes. Um, you know, we, we, we had mentioned that flow, it's, it's a, it, it is a state, we can call it a transcendent state, yeah. um, for, la for lack of a better yeah. terminology, yeah. Um, I, I, that can be demonstrated scientifically, um, that we mentioned that there has to be some sort of ethical uh, framework that we, that, we, that we view it in, um, which can, let, let's say, it's a, uh, Hi, it's almost infinitely or applicable. In other words, yeah. there are all sorts of flow states, right? It's not yeah. just one one thing. No, There's no, all no, sorts no, of no, things, no, no. Um, and so then the question be becomes: Well, in the religious realm, in what we understand to be exper spiritual experiences, where does flow fit? Mm. Um, and I I believe that. Um, if we look at the if we look at the patristic tradition and uh, that we understand ascent towards God or union with God as um, operating within the levels that the Father, especially Saint Dionysius here, Pegat, explain of purification, illumination, and deification. Um, that when a person enters truly into these states. Um, that they are flow states. Um, they are not only that, there's something more, mm -hmm. of course, mm -hmm. divine grace, mm -hmm. yeah. um, but, but they are at the very least, uh, they are flow states. And so, so the flow state, whatever the, the flow state is, it, it becomes uh, a kind of building block or, or an essential element of, of these higher states. I've, I've been making a, a similar argument uh, of a cognitive continuum between insight, flow states. They're, they're just, each one is a, 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 as the same thing, but uh, taken to a higher order. A flow state is basically an extension of interconnected insight states. Oh. That, so you, you take an aha moment of an insight and you get them to chain together so they form a whole greater than the sum of the parts, and then that's when insight moves into being the flow state. So very much there's a continuum. Yes, I, I think so.